for everybody and welcome to the studio of ESO 2024. We are delighted today to have with us Professor Manisha Rati. She is a senior professor in a regional institute of ophthalmology in India. She is a senior consultant in glaucoma and cataract. And we are honored to have, uh, to have her with us uh, in this conference. And we would like to welcome you very much, uh, Professor, and thank you for accepting the invitation and uh, for this interview as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Mathen, and thank you so much to wonderful UAE for having us here. I am really delighted uh, to have accepted your kind invitation, and I am very honored that you are the person who is interviewing me. Thank, thank you, you so much. Likewise, thank you very much. So would you please uh, uh, tell us about your participation in this conference, uh, about the topics that you are um, uh, going to give and the uh, training and the wet labs that you are going to uh, train uh, participants. Right. So today we had a workshop as an instruction course on uh, small incision cataract surgery. We are part of International Society of Manual Small Incision Cataract Surgery. So we had a packed audience and a very good interaction on how to conduct each step and how to convert from phacoemulsification to small incision cataract surgery, the pros and cons and the various difficulties faced. Tomorrow we have a wet lab which is again fully booked in the main hall again on those topics and the difficulties in advanced surgery. Fantastic. So Professor Rati, would you please uh, highlight the importance of the small incision cataract surgery in comparison with the traditional phaco emulsification cataract in terms of uh, astigmatic control and in terms of the uh, quick uh, rehabilitation of, uh, of vision after the, uh, the uh, operation? Thank you so much. This is actually a very important question and that is the first question that comes to mind in residents' minds when they think about going into practice or when they think about the comparison between the surgeries. So I have a few international publications in this regard as well. So what we do is change the location, shape of incision and the axis of the surgery to achieve a near zero astigmatism or in some cases some people prefer point five diapters against the rule astigmatism for near vision. So you can modulate the incision and the surgery to achieve that and also our rehabilitation, the follow up at three months in terms of astigmatism in our phaco patient has turned out to be better. So it's very encouraging. I would never say a surgery is bad or good. Each thing, the surgeon is putting in their heart and soul into the surgery. We are doing the best we can but it is always good to keep exploring new options especially in hard cataracts and advanced cataracts. Fantastic. Uh, do you think it is safer uh, to do it in terms of endothelial protection? That is precisely what we were discussing today, mm -hmm. that uh, because we are not using that high energy, mm. especially like in the brown cataracts and you know in our country, and I think here also maybe you might be getting some cases of advanced cataracts. So uh, the amount of energy that's used in this, the nucleus along with the epinucleus is removed mm -hmm. by irrigation or viscoexpression, you know, as one mass. Mm -hmm. So you use much less energy and the endothelium is better protected mm -hmm. and also again we were discussing and again you know like uh, we, we don't want to jinx it by saying it, you do not have a nucleus drop. Mm -hmm. See that is one complication that you completely avoid in this surgery. So I th and also you can do, you can implant any type of intraocular lens mm -hmm. affordable by the patient. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now as a professor, uh, of course you train uh, students and you um, le let's say do hands-on and um, uh, such uh, transfer of skills. Now uh, let's talk about the learning curve yes. of this procedure. Yes. That's again you are asking the absolutely correct questions Dr. Mathen. So the learning curve we have found to be as much it's comparable to phaco emulsification except that one unforgiving uh, you know step that happens that accident of the nucleus drop that does not happen in this. So sometimes they have difficulty in the tunnel, in making the sclerocorneal tunnel required, but still it does not result in disastrous or vision threatening complications for the patient. So I would say it is safer even in the hands of surgeon, of course, you have to literally, there is also a simulation available, there is a simulator mm -hmm. training available in India mm -hmm. and also you have to be hands on for any surgery, for any step as a surgeon, we must be there to take over and to prevent any complications so that the patient gains from that experience and mm -hmm. it is our job to teach. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know sometimes you feel like saying 
just move, I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. But you have to train them to be better than you. That mm -hmm. is our job, mm -hmm. and we're trying. To do that. Fantastic. So, uh, do you advise uh, the uh, surgeons doing the traditional uh, FACO to, uh, let's say, to to learn this technique in order to yes. convert into it uh, whenever it is indicated? Exactly. So like I was saying, at one conference I was uh, wearing high heel sandals. I, after the whole day there, I changed to flats because I had been going around the whole day. So I was saying nobody changes from flats to high heels. Mm -hmm. The same way nobody converts from small incision cataract surgery to phaco emulsification. But mm -hmm. there is a whole topic of conversion from phaco emulsification to SICS mm -hmm. or MSICS. Mm -hmm. so, uh, how can it be that if there is a need to convert that a surgeon does not know that surgery? Mm -hmm. We are always willing to teach and it's wonderful when somebody wants to learn something. That's why I feel every cataract surgeon, they will land up in difficult situations, they may need to convert, hence they must know how to do this mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there is any difference in uh, lens and or, or let's say uh, IOL selection? Uh, in terms when we, we decide to go for the small incision, does it affect the decision for the IOL selection? Uh, no, it does not. Mm -hmm. In fact, sometimes when a patient can only afford a rigid intraocular lens, mm -hmm. uh, in a heart cataract you can make a bigger capsular excess and insert the lens. Any premium intraocular lens can be used, which a lot of people are using nowadays. So it is, in my words, not a surgery of compromise, but of choice. Mm -hmm. That is what I feel. Yeah. And regarding the pre-op uh, workup, uh, it is just the same for the, the exactly. cataract, including, of course, excluding of dry eye disease and yes. doing the topography and the yes. cell count, um, yes. checking the fundus and uh, everything. And ruling out glaucoma also. Yeah, you know, exactly. So, yeah, so. so how about if there is a doubt about the uh, uh, weak zonules? Do you still yes. go for this technique? Exactly. That is what uh, I had shown some videos about uh, pseudo exfoliation syndrome. Mm -hmm. So in the exfoliation syndrome patients also, it is easier to you know just manipulate the nucleus out via this surgery instead of it has minimal, when you do hydrodissection and you just take out the nucleus and epinucleus, there is minimum stress on the zonules mm -hmm. as compared to phaco emulsification. Even mm -hmm. in, I showed another patient of hypermature cataract with a very mm -hmm. fragile capsule and bag and calcific deposits on the capsule. Yet it was better to uh, use SIC or small incision cataract surgery in these patients. Mm -hmm. um, let's move to more complicated cases. For example, if the patient, um, the eye uh, has been uh, had uh, uh, vitrectomy for something related to the retina and um, diabetic retinopathy or something. So is it that easy to do that? No. I would say there are a lot of difficult situations and you cannot, uh, when you start a surgery, you cannot think it's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, even a small a posterior polar cataract may mm -hmm. land you in trouble. So every time proceed with caution, every time, but I find that it is safer mm -hmm. than the other options, than many of the other options available. Like another patient I had who had operated trabeculectomy superiorly. Mm -hmm. So we did a, a small incision cataract surgery on the temporal side because you do not want to spoil the bleb. And also, uh, even up to the temporal side, there was some scarring. So mm -hmm. again, you are more careful in making the tunnel in those patients. And rigid pupil also, they, mm -hmm. they also have uh, problems. Mm -hmm. But you deal with just like in any other mm -hmm. case. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you very much, Professor Rati, for this, uh, this information and for uh, the, um, your participation in uh, a transfer of your skills. And uh, we, we, we are uh, looking forward to uh, more collaboration in the future. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank the audience and uh, the, um, everybody for uh, watching this uh, nice session. And uh, have a good uh, uh, evening uh, in advance.